Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a leak code problem called maximum unique subarray sum after deletion. It sounds a bit complicated, but don't worry. We're going to break it down step by step and see that the core idea is actually quite intuitive. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the official problem description. The main goal is to find the biggest possible sum we can get from a list of numbers, but with a few important rules. We're given a list of integers, which we'll call nums. Let's break down what we're allowed to do. So let's simplify this. The problem says we can delete elements and then find a subarray. This is a slightly confusing way of saying we can pick and choose a subsequence of elements from the original list. The key constraints are that the elements we ultimately pick must be unique and their sum must be maximized. Think of it like this. You have a bag of numbered balls, some with duplicate numbers. Your job is to pick a set of balls with unique numbers to get the highest possible total score. Let's start with a simple example. The input list is one, two, three, four, five. Here, every number is positive and every number is already unique. To maximize our sum, why would we want to get rid of any of these great numbers? We wouldn't, so we just keep all of them. The sum is 15 and that's our answer. Easy enough. Now for a more interesting case. Our input has a bunch of ones and a zero. The rule is that our final set of numbers must be unique. This means we can only choose the number one a single time. We also have a zero. To get the biggest possible sum, we should obviously choose the one. Choosing zero wouldn't help or hurt the sum, but the one definitely helps. So the best unique set we can make is just the number one, giving us a maximum sum of one. Okay, what happens when we throw negative numbers into the mix? Here, our list has positive numbers, negative numbers, and a zero. Let's think about our goal, maximize the sum. What kind of numbers help us do that? Positive ones, of course. What kind of numbers hurt our sum? The negative ones. Including a negative number would always make our total smaller, so we should probably ignore them. So a strategy is starting to form. It's a greedy one. We should greedily grab all the numbers that help us and discard all the numbers that hurt us. That means we want to take every unique positive number we can find. We absolutely want to avoid all the negative numbers. And zero, well, it doesn't matter, so we can just ignore it for simplicity. This insight is the key to the entire problem. This brings us to the official approach from the editorial. It's exactly what we just figured out. We can just go through the list, collect every single positive number, and use a data structure like a hash set to automatically handle the duplicates for us. Once we have our set of unique positive numbers, all we have to do is add them together to get our maximum sum. But wait, what about an edge case? What if the list only contains negative numbers, like negative 5, negative 2, and negative 10? Our strategy of only picking positive numbers would give us an empty set with a sum of zero. But the problem says we must pick at least one element. So if we have to pick something, which one should it be? To get the highest possible sum, we should pick the number that is least negative. In other words, the maximum value in the array. In this case, that's negative two. All right, let's look at the complete code. It's surprisingly short and elegant because it directly follows our logic. We'll break down each part on the next slide. Let's walk through that code. The first line is a Python set comprehension. It's a concise way to build a set. It iterates through every number in the input list, checks if that number is positive, and if it is, adds it to our new set. Because it's a set, if we see the number five multiple times, it only gets stored once. It's perfect for our needs. Now for the final logic. We check the length of the set we just created. If its length is zero, that's our signal that we hit the edge case with no positive numbers. In that situation, we return the maximum value from the original input list. But in the normal case, where we did find some positive numbers, we just use the sum function to add up everything in our set and return that total. And that's it. So how efficient is this solution? For time complexity, we have to look through the input list once to build our set. That's a big O of N operation, where N is the number of elements in the list. The other operations like summing the set or finding the max are also linear in the worst case. So, the overall time complexity is big O of N. For space, our set could, in the worst case, store every single element if they are all unique and positive. So the space complexity is also big O of N. Let's recap the main points. First, it's crucial to correctly interpret the problem. The complex wording boils down to a much simpler goal. Find the best unique subsequence. Second, a greedy approach works perfectly here. Maximizing a sum means you should be greedy about picking positive values. And finally, always think about the edge cases. The scenario with no positive numbers was a key detail needed for a correct solution. 
I hope this breakdown helped make the problem and its solution crystal clear. If you found this useful, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Subscribe for more Leap Code explanations, and feel free to drop any questions in the comments. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, you can always support the channel through the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next video.